that little screw I made a couple of weeks ago, uh, the funny thread with the rounded end on with the whole the screw, I found out it's actually a bolt that holds a French wardrobe together. So it does screw into wood and the only hand the holes in is for a pin to tighten it. Um, the lad is really happy with the, the job. It's something else I made that's probably going to be here for a long time. Anyway, I did enjoy making it and I thought I'd let you know what it was for. So it was a, a wood thread, like a, a type of buttons I suppose, but definitely a wood screw thread. A while ago I made a liner puller for a lad for pulling diesel liners out. He's to the stage now where he's reassembling the engine and he needs a, a depth gauge or a height gauge to measure how far the liners protrude from the block. This is a drawing centres or a sketchy centres. It's basically a bit of 25mm square material. <coughs> Got a hole drilled through there. The down gauge goes down through there, held in with a little screw that will be split. And you hold that flat on the block and this measures how high the liner is above the block. Quite a simple idea. I'm going to make them one of them. I haven't got any 25mm square. I've got some 20 square key steel that will do no problem at all. I have got a similar thing here. I'm not sure if this is homemade or not. It certainly wants Bob's attention on the indicator. But that's obviously what I'm doing a surface, flat surface, or something that's down below a flat surface, where in the large case it's what's up above the surface. It's probably seen a little bit of action that being warm there. Because this piece of casing has been lying in the bottom of the drawer getting clattered around I'm just going to gently take all the burrs off it so we've got something nice and flat to start with We're not so much flat but it's got no little raised bits on it jaws on the base so it's not gonna not gonna mark it. Right, so that's reasonable. Now we know where the end of the bar is on the DRO, so I need to go back there for 22mm and I think it was 5mm down it had to be recessed for. The first thing is to find the centre. Uh, 
first thing is to take the spin lock off, then find the centre. Zero, throw it again. Perfect. Don't know who I say. Same 30, which it will do because it's a 20 mil, it's a case steel, and that's 10 mil diameter. So we need a half that. Right, so that's spot on in the centre. We'll lock the right axis off at that. We need to find the end. Do it again just to make sure. Okay, so that's ten mil, so if we go in five. That comes right on the end. Because there we'll zero again. Right, so the axis of this is right on the edge of there, right in the centre. Right, so you can see there, it's right on the edge. And it looks like it's in the middle. If it looks like it is, it will be. Right, so we want to come in 10 mil. Is there. Right, this is a seven point nine mil drill. It lives in the box with a eight mil reamer. particular ream has a parallel shank one, I have got a tape a shank one as well ream has, you run very slow and you only run in one direction, you never reverse a reamer. So slow it right down, nice and gently, and that's taken a tenth of a mil out, so that should be a perfect fit now. For the DTI, Right, which it is, that's nice, perfect fit. And by the time we we'll put a slot in there, when the clamp bolt goes in, it's going to be just a job. <coughs> right, once again, let's find the, the centre time.
using the DRO makes this easy. You can you can do the same thing using the dials, but using the DRO it means that any backlash is just wiped out automatically. And there's a bit of backlash on this. Right. So lock the Y axis off. We want this drill to tap in 5mm for a clamp screw. We need the tap and drill for 4mm, it's 3.2. So we'll go straight through the, the 3.2 and then we'll put a clearance drill in and then we'll go ahead and tap it. Then you speed up with a small drill. This 4mm drill needs to go down for 10 so I can use my cheap and cherry bang good depth gauge. 10 is going to get us halfway through it. Right, that's the 4mm top head. I'm going to put a Counter bone there so the head sinks into it. I've plenty of material. So I'll find a miller cutter and we'll gently counter sink that. Right, the head of this is 7mm. I haven't got a 7mm milling cutter. I've got a 6, so I'll use a 6 and I'll machine a little bit off that. And the depth of it is 4mm. This is the only time you see me use a a milling cutter and a drill chuck being used as a drill, not a milling cutter. Right, so that's zeroed. A little bit of, bit of juice. Nice and gently. Be brave and power top this. It's a nice sharp top and it's a right size hole, so You could just split that with a hacksaw. I've done plenty of that with myself, but a slitting disc certainly makes a, a much better job of it. So we need to bring up the table until it's just touching. When I was a smoker, I used to be able to use cigarette papers, but now I don't smoke anymore, so I haven't got cigarette papers. And I think the cigarette paper was a thousand and a half thick. Right, that's just gripping nicely there, so we zero the axis down to the bottom. Oh, up to the top rather. See him again.
Right, if we're half that, that's going to go with the centre. Right, spot on. So we'll lock off the Z axis at that. Have a look at it. It certainly looks like it's in the middle. These need to be run very slowly, very gently. They get hot quick. The teeth come off them or fruit loads of them. You've got to be really careful with them. Right, when you think about it, it's just a revolving hacksaw blade, that's all it is. And this one's not particularly sharp, so we'll gently, very, very gently. Running off sight because it's a poor me at all of it. It will do the job. Right, that's a throw. Nice. Right, so we'll set this up on your cylinder block. You ideally have a, a gel gear with a lot more travel than that. Then you will bring it along on top of the liner that's putting out the block and you get a direct reading of how far the liner is actually sticking. Quite simple but very very accurate, very effective. I'll cut it at length, dress it up. Put some nice chamfers on, polish it, and then it's ready to go. And that'll basically last forever. There's nothing to go wrong, there's no batteries to go flat. Once again, I'd just like to say thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. A special thanks for all the well wishes that are coming in, and a massive thanks to everybody who's keeping the company running. Anyway, take care, keep well, and hopefully, I'll see you on Wednesday night.